The world gained a new tool in its search for what's really out there with the successful launch of the most powerful telescope ever created. How cool does that sound? Science has opened a window to the past and to our future understanding of how our galaxy and the universe works. Built as a successor to NASA's Hubble telescope, space telescope, the James Webb telescope has the biggest mirror of any telescope ever launched from Earth and will use a complex system of infrared cameras and mirrors to study some of the most distant stars and galaxies ever recorded. If you're trying to wrap your head around that, it might be hard. I am as well. We just so happen to have an astrophysicist ready to do it for us. Akeem Olusei, thank you so much for joining us with your insight and understanding here. We do appreciate it. Thank you for having me. I'm very excited to be here. All right. Yeah, I can see the smile on your face. The whole scientific <laughs> community is very excited. Let's begin by talking tech. The telescope yeah. isn't operational just yet as it will unfold over the next two weeks, week and a half to deploy its mirrors. How does this telescope work and how is it different from Hubble? Oh, it's different in many ways uh, that allow, and they allow it to do its science. The first thing is it's a lot bigger. And so the value of a telescope is in its val is in its ability to collect light. So the more surface area of mirror that you have that's reflecting light, then the deeper you can see into the universe and the more dim objects you can study. And you can also do the science we call spectroscopy, where we break up the light like a prism does, but far more extreme. And that's how you can untangle the light and find out what the matter is doing. And so the other thing that's important in a telescope is not just the mirror, it's the detectors. So what do I mean by a detector? The classic detector was photographic film. Today, we have electronic detectors, right? So your phone camera. So to understand the difference between Webb and Hubble, think about it like this. Hubble was made in the 80s. We didn't have phone cameras in the 80s. That's How right. far along have our detector technologies advanced since the time of Hubble? It's, it's amazing. You know, high school science didn't really do it for me, but when I was a kid and we were talking about the stars, I mean, how do you not get involved in that? Earth has very mysterious and even dangerous interstellar neighborhoods, <laughs> supermassive mm. black holes, dark matter, exploding stars that create beautiful supernovas like the one we're looking at right now. Will this telescope help us get a closer and better understanding of these kind of phenomenons? Oh, absolutely. The, the Hubble, excuse me, the Webb telescope is going to help us to find things near and far in our current time and at the beginning of the universe. And that's why I'm so excited about it, right? So at the outside of our universe, excuse me, on the outskirts of our solar system are these regions known as the Kuiper Belt, where you find objects like Pluto, and surrounding that is the Oort Cloud, and that's largely unexplored. But with Webb and other instruments that are coming online, like the Vera Rubin Telescope, we're going to be able to explore that era. Area. The other thing about Webb that makes it different from Hubble is that it's tuned to the infrared. And just like red light can make it from the sun to your eyes at sunset through our atmosphere, but the blue light has bounced away, well, stars and planets are born inside clouds of gas. And so the visible light is too short wavelength to make it out. But the longer wavelength infrared light can make it out, so Webb will be able to look and see planets and stars being formed. But the most important planets and stars uh, for, for nerds like me are the first stars. <laughs> And so we have not yet seen the birth of galaxies in the early universe or the birth of the first stars. Webb may just be the telescope to do that for the first time. That's amazing, and it leads into my last question for you. I guarantee you our viewers are thinking the same thing I am right now. Boy, would I love to have you as a teacher. <laughs> you would have kept my interest, I swear. Uh, we've seen scientific journals and astronomers classify this as a window to the past, as you were just talking yes. about. Please explain that to us about the past. How can a telescope look to the past? You know what? You're always looking to the past, but you just don't. It, you just don't get you just don't experience it right because you know if you're looking at me right now your eye is just a passive detector and light has to travel from whatever you're looking at to your eye so the farther away something is the longer the light travels so web is going to be able to see things uh that are 13 the light has been traveling to us for 13 billion years now you notice i didn't say 13 billion light years away because those are two different things <laughs> of course they are. And don't think I didn't know that they were. Hakeem, thank you so much for taking us through this. I'm sold. I'm now going to be watching this point by point over the next coming weeks. It's going to be good. It's going to be good. We appreciate it.
Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.